Hey, buddies! Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Victoria 3, my new grand strategy girlfriend. No, it is my addiction. I am in love with this game. I want to marry this game. It is so delightful. There's so much going on. Look at all this gold reserves that we're burning. Why are we losing gold? Hold on. That's right, because we increased government spending, and we were just about to increase taxes. Now, let's talk about taxes. So, taxes are obviously based, because that means I get more money. However, this is not so based for my population. If we take a moment here, let me just kind of squiggle our way down to somebody. Oh, I don't know, someone who's working here in Chukoku. Let me take a look at the machinists. Their tax burden is quite high. You can see here, they're generating about 1.8k in tax or in expenses. And a significant portion of that is tax. So if we start raising tax, people are going to have a harder time surviving. Now, it is only a 1.5% increase in tax, but if we go back down and we check out Jukoku and we let a week tick by, these guys are paying an awful lot more tax now. So uh, the quality of life, and those was, that was a fairly rich pop, right? So those guys were not poor. If we maybe look at maybe a population that's a little bit poorer, like a laborer, those income taxes start to look a little bit more onerous, right? They're starting to chip away at that income pretty heavily. However, the big advantage is now I have a much larger pool of cash for me to use. And so why didn't I just go immediately to a higher tax rate at the start of the game? Well, because that would over-radicalize my population. Radicals have increased. You can see the standard of living in my country is sharply declining as goods are becoming expensive and rare and difficult to buy. People have less money and goods are too expensive because I'm taxing them too much. Oh no, not good for the quality of life of the people in Japan. What it is good for though is the GDP because the GDP will start to grow even faster as I have even more resources I can yeet into the economy. Now, uh, we have a little bit of a government surplus and we could spend this surplus on expanding the construction industry even more. However, my concern with that is that would leave no money to go to war with. <laughs> because let me tell you, an army marches on its guns, okay? It is expensive to mount wars. So perhaps we will stockpile a little bit of cash so we can do a little bit more colonialism, a little bit more war, right? You know, the kind of the cool things all the cool empires are doing, right? Everyone's got colonies. Britain's got colonies. France has got colonies. All these really big, powerful European powers, they've all got colonies. We want to have people who pay us money too. So we're going to save a little bit of this cash, build up our military just a, just a little bit. What's going on? You guys are angry again? Okay. You're allowed to be angry. So the radicalism is sharply increasing as a result of the tax and the quality of life is sharply decreasing as a result of the increased tax. So we're going to be dealing with a little bit more revolution as well. So there's a, there's a, there's a bunch of reasons you don't want to do what I'm doing. Okay. It's not all sunshines and rainbows in, uh, in Japan right now, right? Things are, things are happening that are upsetting people. We are colonizing a new region and building a port in it to maintain it. Our science level is actually quite advanced. Now we're generating about 12.9 more innovation than we were earlier. I remember we need this weekly innovation because our tech level is growing really, really slowly. The one advantage we have is our literacy is getting quite high, um, up to 25%, which puts us at 207th in the world, which is not amazing, all things considered. The political power of these academics is growing. It's not amazing, but it is growing. You can see here, there's a bit of a sharp decline there as we stopped expanding it. We now have access to empiricism. This will unlock a few laws like total separation of church and state, public schools, constitutional reform party as well, which is a type of uh, political party that can form in our country when we actually have a voting block, uh, which could theoretically happen after we research landed voting. Very much so focused on um, social reform inside Japan. We can do industrial reform, as time comes on, but social reform is going to be one of the main drivers in us advancing Japanese society and industrializing it, getting it to where it needs to be so that it can take its place among the powers of the world. So we fully colonized Fiji. There should be a little bit of migration coming here. And grabbing these is like a very, very small amount of GDP. Uh, but the nice thing is in the long term, I'm pretty sure these islands will have at least somewhat significant value. Our line is stagnating as we focus on building up our academia, but I think we have built up enough GDP to suffer a little bit, just a little bit of stagnation, okay? Even our GDP is actually probably even contracting slightly, which is a bit problematic for us, but the result of having all of these universities, both on a technological and political standpoint, I think is worth the slight stagnation because one of the biggest factors causing us to stagnate is the political situation in Japan right now. 
There's been some successes and some defeats in the name of enacting landed voting, but we are slowly crawling our way forward in progress. Some people might not like this RNG uh, political system. I, I can totally respect that. I really, really like it because it kind of models a sort of series of victories and defeats and manipulating the political situation inside your country. So we've taken control of most of the islands in the southern pacific i think we do need to think about maybe conquering hawaii which will almost necessitate us building a naval base and then a factory that can produce the amount of wars required to fuel it that'll be something we would like to look into in the near future let's start colonizing micronesia and we'll also put a port in there micronesia isn't a very largely populated region but it does have about 20,000 people and the potential for a little bit of fishing and logging and banana plantations. You know, there's, there's, there's good land here for us to take control of. And more importantly, it's also economically relevant land for a number of reasons, mostly due to the fact that we are denying holdings to potential rivals in the Pacific. I do think that colonizing these islands will short term hurt us, um, which will long term hurt us. But in totality, this will increase our prestige, increase our GDP, do all these sorts of things. We just did just unlock mass communication, giving us 10% more authority. This also leads towards more social revolution technologies. Ooh, central archives. This is a big one. This is going to give us 25 taxation capacity in most of our, in all of our territory and plus one max home affairs institution. Most importantly, this will unlock standardized filing systems for the government administration. Now, let's have a little bit of a chat about those, the consequences of this. If we take a look here, one of the situations we've been dealing with this entire game is the fact that we have an inefficient taxa taxation capacity for most of our regions. So, by virtue of simply just researching this, which will take 16 to 21 months because it's being boosted by our technology spread, and we have brought it down now to its minimum price of 7,500 innovation, which is a completely reasonable price to pay, we will significantly increase the amount of income taxes we are able to collect. Now remember, part of the reason why the impact of income taxes on my population was so light was because most of my population are being inefficiently taxed due to the insufficient taxation capacity. Additionally, we'll be able to upgrade our government administrations from using a filing cabinet system, which is producing 700 bureaucracy, now remember that's over 14 different buildings, uh, to being able to produce 910 extra, I believe. Is that extra or per level? I don't remember. I think that might be total. Anyway, look, we'll be able to, with a similar number of buildings, right, by just building an extra three or four paper factories, we'll be able to supply our bureaucracy with a lot more paper. Of course, that's going to come at a cost, a cost that will have to be borne by the tax system. So, you know, Bureaucracy is all, all well and good, and that extra bureaucracy can be put towards, for example, improving our ability to colonize, which maybe will open up opportunities in Africa. It's all flowing together, I hope. It's all steady. I hope you're starting to see how every system interacts and interchanges and has an interesting impact on how the game unfolds for you. Here comes the next tick for the landed voting in 15 days. We have, uh, I'd say, a 50% chance of having a positive outcome, which is not ideal. But when you consider that a, de a debate isn't necessarily a negative outcome. Ah, OK, so we had an advancement. So that's another 10% success chance. Very nice. The Bessemer process has been unlocked. This will allow us to produce steel more efficiently in our steel mills, although we don't have any steel mills just yet. It's not part of our strategy. We are not producing. Uh, we are not pursuing a production-based reform for Japan. We are very much so focused on the social reform part of Japan. We are, of course, getting passive military technology, just unlocking line infantry. And the nice thing about that is that actually forks nicely into our current plans, which was to upgrade our infantry. Of course, in order to upgrade our infantry from a regular infantry, who have 20, 10 offense and 15 defense, to line infantry of 20 and 30, we will need to produce and purchase small arms for them. So I'll need to build a factory to, that builds small arms, and then I'll need to buy those small arms, and they are not cheap, okay? So it's going to cost me at least, I mean, at a minimum price, what is it, like uh, 1200 if I get it at a perfectly even price? So I think my plan is, in Kyoto, to build this barracks up to a maximum level, and then I think a single arms factory, yeah, will produce 25 small arms, which will be able to supply um, this battalion. Of course, it'll use iron and hardwood, but we'll figure all that out as we get to it approximately half of the universities have been built and they're currently consuming about seven thousand pounds per week uh, but they are producing me 21 innovation a decent amount of qualifications which means i can have higher skill workers in my country and a very very healthy 300,000 political power that's primarily going i don't know why they support the buddhist monks so much surely they should support the intelligentsia yeah i don't know why the support for the um the Buddhist monks is so high, that should really change. Maybe it's because they used to be clergymen and their support has yet to change. 
Yeah, the political power of the Buddhist monks is slowly decreasing and the political power of the intelligentsia is slowly increasing, which is the kind of situation that we want to be in. Looks like we rolled another success on landed voting, but didn't quite manage to pass it just in advance. But we are up to now to a 75% chance of a positive outcome, which is, well, I'd say that's pretty reasonable. Um, even debates, while well, they do come with downslides. Uh, are still positive in my opinion. So I, I feel like we're very, very close to being able to actually have elections in this country. Okay, this is a huge moment. We just finished researching central archives, giving us that taxation capacity that I talked about, which should similarly result in a massive boost in the national income revenue. If I let the week tick over here, you will see the jump. Yeah, there it is. Look at that vertical little jump from all of the tax efficiency across my country going up significantly. This is all money that we can then reinvest back into Japan. We could theoretically lower taxes again, but I think I would rather have money passing through my hands. Now, I do have to make a statement here because technically, yes, having all this cash in my hand is really, really good for me because I have more control over the country, but it's actually also really bad for me because by lowering the standard of living of the people in my country, they are going to grow their population slower, which means my GDP is going to grow slower as a result of this higher taxation. So there is a downside for this, right? And even a very small difference in population growth very early in the game will have massive ramifications for population growth later on in the game, okay? Like a, a hundredth of a percent difference in population growth is like a difference of te potentially like 10 million people at the end of the game. So be very conscious of the fact that I'm doing this taxation early um, and how it's actually hurting my com com uh, my country in some ways. I almost called it a company because I'm running it like it's my company. <laughs> Japan is my company. So with Central Archives, I'm going to want to look for, I believe it's mechanical tools here. This will give me access to sulfite pulping in my paper mills. Now this will allow me to increase the productivity of my paper mills without actually increasing the number of paper mills that I have. So that's definitely something I want to look into getting my hands on. And I want all that extra paper because my entire economy is ready to adopt a more advanced filing system, which will give me a ton of spare bureaucracy and that spare bureaucracy will translate directly into production and tax. Unfortunately, another success from landed voting. At the very least, we are getting to the point now where it's almost at the maximum level. Really, really good chance of it to succeed. I've rolled really, really poorly. Uh, normally, I would win these a lot earlier. But again, that's just the RNG nature of the political system. You're not going to be able to achieve everything exactly when you want to. You're not in total control, which will be frustrating for some people. And I totally respect that. It looks like some sort of war has broken out between France and Prussia. Let's have a little bit of a look at this. Um, this is Prussia versus Lippe. Um, apparently, Anhal, Todd Soller and Waldeck are all participating. So what is the war goal here? Um, I can't seem to tell. It looks like maybe the French were invading the Rus the, the, the Prussians to try and do something here, but uh, it does not seem to be going well for them. They seem to be getting pushed back. Let's take a look at this battle. Although France seems to be doing well now, they're starting to push. Interesting. Curious to see what the political situation will come out of this. Interesting. So we can get a new admiral for the trade union that will increase their interest and appeal. And the laborer pops will become more loyalist. Well, having loyalists can be really, really handy. Um, it can imp improve the popularity of your... It can make your political parties happier, basically, if you have a lot of loyalists. Right now we have a lot of radicals, which is making my political situation a little bit un untenable. I think, as far as I can tell, we've basically managed to colonize everything that we could find in the Pacific. We could contest the North Island. I worry about upsetting the people who live there. I'm going to leave that for Britain. I could also try to uh, occupy this piece of territory here. You know, I think I'm not going to try to compete for Australia. That'll just drag me into conflicts I don't want to participate in later on in the game. But for example, there should be some fairly easy territory for me to colonize here in Indonesia. I do have to wait until my declared interest activates in here, however. This is really, really good. We're now chooching along at maximum innovation, which means we're making up for the fact that our technology spread is so weak. Um, that'll give us a lot of control about how we choose where and when we go. And we're just about to finish our very last university, which will allow us to actually move on and start improving our economy. Now, I wanted, I wanted to talk about like expanding and going to war and stuff like that, but I think we should spend some of this money continuing to expand the economy of Japan. Japan's economy is not bad right now, but it definitely could use some a little bit of improvement. One thing I got distracted and forgot to do was to allow my furniture factories to consume tools. This will actually increase the productivity quite a bit, 580 across the entire industry. Now that will make tools more expensive in my in my market, but I can always build more tool factories. 
leaded glass, on the other hand, is something I would like to do, but I would need to build some lead mines and make those lead mines relatively cheap. And then with that surplus of glass, I could come down to my urban centers and start using market squares. Although I would probably want to talk about urban centers. Ah, oh, perfect. So we just passed landed voting. This is a big political change in our country. No longer are we doing total autocracy. We have a voting system now. The only people who can vote are arist arist aristocrats, capitalists, the church and officers. So it's not really much of a voting system, right? It's kind of a little bit closer to aristocracy voting system okay so it's kind of like a it's a step down from the king rules all but it's still pretty close now some people are going to be upset with this um, but the big revolution here is that we are going to get political parties to start forming the constitutional reform party the imperial rule party and the important thing about those is when groups join together into political parties it's much easier to have high legitimacy because instead of your legitimacy being reduced by the number of factions that are in your government, it's actually reduced by the number of political parties. So I'm going to have the Imperial Rule Party and then I'm going to bring the entire Constitutional Reform Party into my government, which will give me a huge amount of legitimacy. And then I can consider maybe doing a little bit more law changing. Now, we're not ready to go to a presidential republic or anything like that, but I'm going to have a little look around here and see if there's anything I can change. You can see the clout of the trade unions is beginning to exist. So as we build up a middle class, we will start to get trade unionists and petty bourgeoisie starting to participate in politics. For now, though, it's mostly peasants, intelligentsia, industrialists and the shogunate running the show. We could go to private schools. I don't want to spend my political capital on private schools. I would rather try to make like a big ticket item and a really big ticket item would be going to agrarianism. It only has a 20% chance of happening and it will anger the shogunate. But if we could move towards this traditional, wait, uh, traditionalism lowers our taxation capacity. It lowers our bureaucracy cost, but um, it doesn't do much beyond that. I would much rather have either interventionism, but I can't take in interventionism because I have serfdom or agrarianism. Agrarianism will be much easier to pass because the peasants will uh, like it. Basically what this will allow us to do is to subsidize a variety of different things. But more importantly, it will make it so that aristocrats will contribute some of their earnings to the investment pool. Thus, this will also make the ar aristocrats slightly poorer because they'll be uh, taking in less dividends and poorer pops have less political power. So taking agrarianism will actually have some pretty nice downstream effects if I can get it passed. However, there is a 40% chance it'll be opposed by the shoguns. Even so, they're not radically opposed to it. It just might be difficult to roll the dice. So we've finished building our paper mills. Uh, we are almost done building mechanical tools. Let's have a little bit of a look at our economy and see what is the most expensive good that we could produce. Basic good. So it looks like fruit is relatively expensive in the Japanese market. So I'm going to go come down here. Uh, I'm going to come into my buildings, my rural buildings. I'm going to tell every single one of my farms to start a citrus orchard. This should allow them to be more productive. I'm also going to tell my livestock ranches to start using tools to produce extra meat. And then we'll let those price changes reflect. Uh, yeah, now tools are a little bit expensive. How much infrastructure room do I have on this? I have a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of infrastructure room. So let's do uh, one more tooling workshop in the capital. And if I build a tooling workshop, I need an iron mine. Let's add another construction sector to Kansai. We have a little bit of, we have a nice surplus here so we can, we can afford to do that. Mechanical tools have been unlocked. This unlocks a bunch of really, really cool stuff. Most importantly, uh, precision tools, steel tools, sulfide pulping, and slaughterhouses for livestock ranches. So we're going to spend a little bit of time upgrading our economy. Now we don't need another production tech, so I'm going to focus on upgrading my society tech because there's a bunch of really, really cool stuff that we can get downstream there. So in order, well, actually, there might be a production tech that I really want. Is it the atmospheric engine? This would allow me to use tools and coal to make my mines more efficient. But most importantly, this will allow my mines to employ capitalists. I'm actually going to go for the atmospheric engine and potentially into railways. So something for us to consider in order for us to expand the paper production, we are going to need 150 sulfur. Now with the atmospheric engine pump, that's 40 sulfur per mine. So I would need four sulfur mines. Let's have a look at the infrastructure level here. Plenty of infrastructure left in Shikoku. One, two, three, four mines um, and then in order to fuel those i'm going to need two coal mines and then i'm going to need two coal mines for my iron mines as well so a lot of mine expansion for now we're starting to increase the diversity of not only the goods that we're producing but the complexity of the resource chain that is going into producing those goods which is probably the most satisfying and fun part of the game for me 
So we have paper and wood at near perfect prices. Fish and grain is a little bit cheap. That's because it's being overproduced due to serfdom. We'll be able to solve that issue. Once we get rid of serfdom, um, that'll fix it. And the reason for that is if we come down here to unused arable land and we look at the subsistence farm, the production method they are using is serfdom, which means they have lower subsistence output, but they are also producing extra grain. So if we can get that changed, uh, less grain will be, be produced and more of these other goods will be produced. Uh, which will allow us to actually start building profitable farms and moving people out of subsistence much more easily. We're getting a little bit of cash. Ooh, election results. The Constitutional Reform Party just got a huge, huge win in that election, which should, as a result, give them a massive boost to their clout because they won the election. Yeah, all three of these political parties just got a huge boost to their clout. Now, so did the Shogunate, but people like the Buddhist monks and the samurai... They have definitely lost clout. Oh, huge. So just as easily as it is possible to suffer defeat after defeat after defeat when you're trying to do a reform like we did before, it's also possible to just get it on the first go. And we just passed agrarianism. Now, I would like you to direct your eyes over here. Look at the investment pool transfer. Okay, I'm going to let a week tick by real quick. Our economy went a little bit crazy, right? But look at this investment pool transfer. Now we are getting a lot more money being transferred from the arist aristocratic class to the national coffers. To, to They're investing in the economy, essentially. Now that will come, additionally, with a significant increase in our income taxes as well, because one of the downsides of having traditionalism, I believe, was a deficit in our taxation capacity minus 25%, but also a bureaucracy population cost modifier. Now, we're negative on bureaucracy, but we could solve that problem pretty quickly, actually. If I had been thinking, I would have had this bureaucracy already kind of built. Um, so where do I have infrastructure room? Uh, there's plenty of infrastructure room here in Shikaku. So I need... Well, actually, no, I don't need to change anything because when I have my silver mines finished, I'll be able to start switching over paper mills to paper production. And then I'll be able to start going. Can I actually afford to do this now? Hang on. Can I come here? Can I afford to move a couple of these? There's an extra 200 bureaucracy. Well, not quite. A little bit extra. Another little bit extra. Okay, we're just going to keep pushing the bureaucracy of my country up slightly until it starts ca causing massive negative effects. Okay, so we're still massively positive on cash. Massively positive on cash. So what if I push Kansai? This might be a little bit too much of a push. Okay, yeah, so that ended up in negative, unfortunately. However, that's mostly due to the fact that um, paper is just really expensive right now. We're going to solve that paper shortage. So huge upgrade, agrarianism. The amount of cash flow that we have available, just from the investment pool transfer, the efficiency of our tax collection. We, we have such a much more efficient government set up right now. Uh, so we just got an event for adopting filing cabinets. We could pick up 3,000 progress on identification documents, or we could get a 5% bureaucracy boost for five years. I feel like tech is so rare, especially for a, a sieve like Japan. We could use that little bit of a boost. Japan starts off in a pretty rough place uh, when it comes to tech. So anything we can scrounge out, we will. We are missing a little bit of maximum potential here. We probably want like two to three more universities. I'll queue them up. I want to give a little bit of time for people to cool off from the recent changes. Some of the bigger reforms that we want to do will be far more radicalizing. For example, abolishing serfdom will 100% radicalize the shogunate, which is not good for us. Now, here's the thing. If we can hold off a revolution long enough, we could potentially kick off serfdom. Um, another way to do things is if we can disempower them. One way to disempower them would be to potentially to pass something like national militia or professional army. National militia, I think, is not amazing. I think I would prefer... I guess national militia actually would be really, really good because it's easy to pass. We could still have a small professional army. We would have to rely heavily on conscription, which is not ideal, and it would make our power projection very limited. So... Power proje yeah, I think I would like prof I would much prefer a professional army, but however, I'm willing to take national militia because it will disempower both the shogunate and the samurai, who are my main opponents to reform in this country. God, I would love I would love professional army. It's so good. But let's go for national militia. Purely for political reasons, I don't think it's particularly good for the situation that we're in, especially if we want to be doing hedge money and empires. Theoretically, we would like to maybe switch to mass conscription. You know, I changed my mind. I changed my mind. I changed my mind. Let's let's do something a little weird. Let's reform the government. Let's bring the samurai into government. This will lower our legitimacy. However, it will mean 
that now when we go to try to pass professional army, we have a 20% chance of succeeding. It's a lot less than national militia, but I, I'm going to go for it. Because if we can get professional army, it opens up a lot of doors for us. Just purely in the fact that we can have a large centralized army in the capital that could put down any rebellions. So there's mobile artillery is now available for our military. Haven't really talked much about military and what we need to do with it, but that's because I've been so fo focused on building up the economy. We do have our very first sulfur mine, and the big downside to that is, is sulfur is being produced but not being consumed. So we need to come in and we need to find a paper mill, ideally on its own, like this one, and let it start consuming uh, sulfur, just so we have the basic baseline sulfur economy started. This will hopefully start to bring down the price of paper as we start using sulfur in the economy. Ah, looks like I missed this. Um, the Sambas military revolt has kicked off. Where is that? Yeah, so it looks like there's a tiny little bit of a revolt going on here against the Netherlands. Neither side has actually committed troops to it just yet. Um, or else it's against Sambas and the Netherlands are just getting involved. Either way. Some of this land will belong to me before the uh, before the game is done. At least that's the play. That's the plan. I'm very happy about this. We've managed to bring down the price of paper to a more reasonable level, so we're not burning quite so much cash. I'd kind of like to get it down to about like minus 3%, minus 5%. That's about where I would consider it to be sustainable. It kind of depends on the good and what the input goods are like. I'm pretty sure my logging mills are doing okay. Yeah, yeah, they're super profitable. Super, super, super profitable. Okay, this is big. We now have access to the atmospheric engine. This gives us access to the motor industry. This will allow us to start producing engines. Engines can be used for a variety of things. They mostly increase the power of your economy, right? This is how you build trains and how you build machinery. You need engines to fuel them. So we're very, very much so on the way to industrialization. Most importantly, though, this will activate the atmospheric boiler. Um, so if I go to my coal mines here, you can see this will just straight up increase the productivity of my coal mines at the cost of some tools, right? Once I'm actually producing coal in reasonable quantities, I'll be able to push that onto the rest of my... Um, my mining industry. Let's have a little bit of a look here. So we can make the samurai more powerful and the monks less powerful. I don't think we particularly care about hurting the monks right now. Um, I think we would rather just get a higher enactment success chance. Um, the fact that we managed to get an advance at all here is incredible. The fact that we have a stall potential here too. Um, the stall potential of this law is huge. Our first coal mine has been completed. It will start hiring people, which means we can now switch over our sulfur mines to produce the atmospheric engine pump, which will produce more sulfur. This sulfur will allow me to activate my textile mills. Sorry, no, 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 sorry, my paper mills to all use sulfite pulping, bish, bash, bosh. This will also result in having a lot more machinists. This will lower the price of paper in my economy. And now a complex chain of events means that paper in my economy is now super cheap, which means my government buildings are super cheap to run. Very, very nice. Let's get started on railways. Railways are going to be the way that we build up our capital. And we are going to be trying to concentrate all of our firepower in the capital when it comes to economic development, at least for a short term. The reason for that is because we have a bunch of construction sectors in here. The most efficient place for us to build is in the capital. And speaking of construction sectors, once these coal mines are finished, I'm going to start um, changing some things. My coal is like really expensive right now. It's a bit of a problem, but it will get cheaper as time goes on. When coal, get, when coal gets cheaper, uh, the coal mines will become slightly less profitable, but as a result, it will mean other mines become more profitable. Also, the really nice thing about switching to atmospheric engine pump, I don't know if I mentioned this, it means that we can now go to privately owned, which means more capitalist, which means we're slowly but surely empowering the um, industrialists, continuing to chip away at the potential of the shoguns. Look at that GDP uptick. This is the power of getting production technology. As you start to activate a complex production chain and activate new goods, your GDP growth will start to expand rapidly. I think I can actually go up to maximum construction industry in my capital now. And I will go up to maximum construction industry because this will allow me to start to skyrocket. I have a reasonable gold reserve. I'll be able to start skyrocketing my investments and just cranking GDP. I'll probably crank GDP for another six years before I start thinking about um, potential military action. I do need to abolish serfdom. Like I'm still very much so focused on economic and political reform rather than military conquest. Coal is exceptionally cheap. Iron is reasonably priced. So I should now be able to come into my iron mines and say, hey, uh, wait, no, it's not. I don't need to do iron mines yet, do I? You have to think about that. I needed to come into my tooling workshops and start making steel, steel tools. But in order to make steel tools, I'll need to start making steel mills and they will consume iron. 
steel will also be used to produce the engines for my motor industries. Uh, yes, exactly. So that was the that was the production chain I was looking to go down. Steel mills are very heavy industry. They take up three infrastructure, just like motor industries do. So they're very, very heavy, heavily dependent upon infrastructure. But on the upside, with just two steel mills using a Bessemer steel process, we'll be able to make a ton of steel. The downside is because I've expanded my construction industry so much, I'm suffering a rather big deficit. However, my hope is that I can increase the GDP of my country, which will increase the minting of my country and also the tax income of my country relatively quickly in order to not run out of cash or go into debt by the time that this decreases to zero. It's kind of like how I like to play. I don't, I don't like to go into debt. There is a kind of way you could play where you go like super into bankruptcy. Like you just burn all of your cash at a very, very slow burn rate until you go bankrupt. And then um, it allows you to like do this almost parabolic curve. Okay, so the samurai could lose popularity. I don't like this. I don't want to take 15% enactment success decrease though. I'll take some dispopularity on the samurai. That's totally fine at the cost of preserving my success chance here. Preemptively, I think it would be a good idea to build uh, a motor industry or two to be ready for um, building trains. One thing I haven't really talked about is the concept of urban centers. Basically, every time you build a building, it will produce a certain amount of urbanization. Urbanization is essentially, you know, uh, where your service economy comes from. And that's these things up here, the urban centers. Urban centers are like shops, uh, all that sort of stuff, right? It's like shops and pubs and all that sort of stuff, right? So the more urbanization you have, the more urban urban centers are created. Now, urban centers employ like a whole bunch of different people. And I should totally set these guys to free churches so they employ less clergymen, so I disempower the clergy. And one way I could upgrade these is by producing more glass. This would allow me to produce more services and also increase the quality of my workforce or their quality of living. And also if I produce enough coal, we could justify doing gas streetlights. Now, out of curiosity, what's our current coal level? We're actually, we have a decent surplus of coal, so we could maybe justify in the capital at least turning on gas streetlights. This will increase the total employment of this building, which is quite handy, and increase the consumption of coal while also increasing the amount of services provided. And services are relatively expensive in my economy right now. So we'll bring services down to a much more reasonable point at the cost of consuming more coal. And speaking of consuming more coal, that's probably a good reason to add like, I don't know, like another two coal mines at least. Each coal mine produces 40 coal. Our deficit is... Yeah, no, no, no. We only need one coal mine, actually. We will need more coal once we start finishing these steel mills, though. So I'll pop them up there. I think it would be good to colonize Celebes here. This would be another little bit of a political angle for us. Now, the unfortunate thing is that this area does actually does suffer from malaria. So it'll grow quite slowly. Um, a 90% colony reduction. Uh, even so, it grows reasonably quickly. The nice thing about this is there's actually a decent amount of people living here and has a reasonable GDP. So it'll increase the power of our economy quite a bit. Actually, do you know what I changed? I changed my mind. It's probably a good idea for me to get a colony in Africa instead. So I'm going to establish a colony in Kenya and just get a little Japanese presence here. I'm going to cancel my colonization and abandon my colony here. But there we go. We just unlocked railway and this unlocks a whole bunch of rail transportation for our plantations and our mines and stuff like that. I'll talk about that briefly. Um, so there's a whole bunch of th ways that this will change our economy. If we come over here to one of our mines, one of the biggest costs of a mine is the employment. So if you add rail transportation, it'll actually make it so that you have less lower class workers thus increasing the average standard of living of the worker in it. However, it will consume a resource called transportation. How it, and you could do this in a variety of buildings. If I go to the buildings tab and scroll down, you could see that I could use dye plantations, uh, tea plantations, a whole bunch of different factories and things. Um, I, I believe even logging camps can eventually actually get a production boost from rail, railway. But yeah, railways, uh, basically they increase the complexity of your economy in certain areas. How do we get that resource transportation? Well, we need to build railways. Now, railways are really, really important because A, they produce transportation, which is a good that people can buy, which will increase their quality of life, increases the economic activity in your, in your nation. But more importantly, it also produces infrastructure plus 20 infrastructure. And the amount of buildings you can build in a state is limited by the infrastructure. So if I build a railway in my capital, that means I can build 20 more infrastructure worth of buildings in here. However, my capital gets a 50% bonus, 25 from road maintenance and 25% from it being my market capital. So I'm actually getting 30 infrastructure worth of buildings here. So it's really, really efficient to focus my productivity from both a construction efficiency and an infrastructure efficiency standpoint in my capital. So that's kind of why I like to build up my capital ahead of anything else. I think that's me mostly done with production techs for a short little while. Let's go back to start working on society techs. And backroom dealings have been exposed. So we can ignore corruption, get a 15% enactment success debuff, 
or get a 10% debuff and a 5% bureaucracy debuff. I can eat that bureaucracy debuff, so I'm going to let that. I think, though, we might be reaching the limit of our ability to try to pass professional army. I might let it cycle one or two more times, but I think we're reaching the point where it's just, it's just it ain't going to happen, chief. Our first steel mill has been produced. It is now consuming iron and coal. Uh, looks like there was a bit of a war between a couple of people here. Yeah, so it's now producing, it's using iron and coal to produce steel, but steel isn't being used by any industry, right? Nobody is buying steel. So we're going to come over here to our tool workshops and we're going to start buying steel. This will mean that we're not buying iron as much. However, the fact that we're not buying iron will mean that iron is cheaper for the steel mills and now steel is super expensive. So this will encourage the steel mill to expand their employment. There we go. Look at that profitability shooting up. So I think a single steel mill can produce 90 steel, which should very easily meet the demands of my economy. Postal savings increases our maximum cash reserves. Let's see what the thingy picks next to go for. We could go for modern sewerage. That would give us extra infrastructure across our country. It looks like they went for central banking. Another 10% minting. I'll take that 10% minting. That's just an extra 10% of this value right here in my pocket. But yeah, like, remember, at the start of the game, we were producing tools just by using wood, right? We used wood, and then we built an iron mine. And then the iron mines were just using tools to produce iron. Now we're producing iron, which is using tools, which is being used to produce steel. Steel is being used to produce, like there's a whole web of interconnected buildings, right? Like coal takes tools. Coal takes tools to produce. So there's like a, a big circle of productivity happening. All these buildings are feeding and improving each other and making my economy more complicated. There is basically two ways to build in Victoria 2. Um, that's kind of a tall, which is the way that I'm playing right now, where I try to have a technologically advanced economy. Uh, or you build wide, which is where you just have as many buildings as possible. Both of them are actually valid, in my opinion, particularly if you're in an agrarian economy, which we are right now. So something to think, think about. Tall is what I would... Tall isn't necessary. Ooh, 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 what's this? So let me have a look. Um, the intelligentsia are already pretty unhappy with me, which is hurting my prestige. I don't want to rad radicalize them, but 20% enactment time is actually a pretty damn nice buff. Still really low on enacting professional army. Now, once motor industries are complete, I'm going to prioritize finishing my railway, actually. That's because railways are the only thing that consumes the motor industry good right now. I'm going to be building four railways in the capital. And then when my second motor factory is finished, I'll be building four railways throughout the country. But that's going to be a long term thing. Things are going to get inserted in front of this. Potentially, it depends on how important the railway is towards building up my economy. God damn, I'm still in surplus somehow. Where is the surplus coming from? I guess my GDP is just starting to increase at such a rate that I can potentially consider even continuing to expand my um, construction capacity. Wood is starting to get a little bit expensive, which is kind of concerning me when it comes to expanding my construction capacity. But I will do a slight. Well, no, do you know what I should do? I should go for modern sewage so I can increase the construction capacity in my capital state. This will increase the construction sector max level and also give me more infrastructure per population. Okay, let's get started on a colony in Kenya. Very first thing we need to do is make sure we have a port there to sustain that colony. It can be quite handy to have colonies in Africa due to the fact that there are rubber plantations, gold, all that sort of stuff. There's a lot of really, really valuable things that happen there. Also, have we found our gold mines yet? No gold mines here. There's still discoverable resources. Genuinely shocked by that. Did we find any gold mines down here? Huh. In my in my test game as Japan, I found like gold mines everywhere, dude. Everywhere. I think this is as good a place as I need to leave it though. We're on the cusp of getting railways activated. We're on the cusp of massively increasing the GDP of our country. We're on the cusp of making the graph start to go vertical. Like you could see, there's like a little increase and then there's kind of a stagnation as we build up our intelligentsia. And then there's a big increase as we start investing into our economy again. And we're going to try to make this curve ever upwards. The March of Progress, the March of Progress cannot be stopped. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.